Falinciam is a planet that's criminally underrated. Originally called GJ3470b before being given an official name in 2023, this planet is one of the most well-studied and most interesting exoplanets we've ever come across. It's a hot ice giant about 14 times the size of Earth, or about the size of Neptune, that takes just over three days to complete a full orbit of its star, Caucasian, which is about 96 light years away from Earth. Not only that, but Falinciam is on a polar orbit, meaning instead of orbiting parallel to the star's equator like the vast majority of all planets do, it orbits perpendicular to the equator. Because of its close distance to its star, Falinciam is actively evaporating, losing anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 tons of mass into space per second. That translates to about half an Earth's worth of mass every billion years, and gives the planet a massive comet tail. We know this planet is blue in color with a hazy and cloudy atmosphere, including a haze made of sulfur dioxide, indicating that the atmosphere is active with chemical reactions. It has an average temperature of about 650 degrees Fahrenheit, or 340 Celsius. And if all that wasn't interesting enough, Falinciam is an extremely rare class of planet. Hot ice giants like it are very rare. Of all the exoplanets we've found, we've come across what people call a Neptunian desert, where we expect to find a bunch of hot ice giants, but don't. Valenciam is right on the outer edge of this desert, and it actually provides some strong evidence about what causes it. It's likely that ice giants this close to their stars don't last long, as stellar radiation blasts their atmospheres away in only a few billion years, leaving just rocky cores behind. We see this happening on Falinciam, the planet is actively evaporating. So, we're extremely lucky to see Falinciam as it exists now, because in only a few billion years, it will likely lose its atmosphere entirely and become a rocky planet. So, Falinciam is a hot, well-studied, rare type of planet that's actively being vaporized by its star, is blue in color, and has an orbit perpendicular to where we expect it to be. This is why this world is one of my favorite planets we've ever discovered, simply because of how interesting it is. But, just a few days ago as of the time of making this video, a new discovery was made about this planet and the system it orbits. Falinciam might not be alone. The GJ3470 system is notorious for having refuted planets. Three separate planets on separate occasions have all been proposed to exist here, not including Falinciam itself, which is confirmed to exist. All three planets have been refuted or at least had strong evidence against them. This system is well known among astronomers for having many false positive planet candidates, and searching for planets in the system has been difficult, to say the least. It seemed that Falinciam was destined to be alone, as it began to look like there were no other planets in the system. That is, until July 5th, 2024, when a new search for planets in the system was conducted. Made by the Troy Project, 95 transiting planets, including Falinciam, were searched for the signals of Trojan planets. This was a project years in the making. A Trojan planet, if you haven't heard the term before, is a planet in the exact same orbit as another planet, at their L4 or L5 Lagrange point. Jupiter is thousands of Trojan asteroids in these regions, where the gravity of the star and the planet equal each other, creating pockets of stability where objects tend to collect. Some of Saturn's moons have Trojans of their own, and so do most solar system planets. But all of the thousands of known Trojan objects are small asteroids. Theoretically, entire planets should be able to exist in these regions. Two or even potentially three planets sharing the exact same orbit, one more massive surrounded by smaller worlds caught in the Lagrange points, should exist somewhere. The chances of a system like this being stable are pretty low, and they're likely extremely rare, but possible. I've made a video about Trojan planets before. It was actually the first video I ever voiced on this channel instead of using text on a screen, and I was mostly talking about a single study that showed Trojan planets could theoretically be stable around a few planets in the habitable zones of their stars. There were seven of them, most notably the gas giants Melchiades, Pipitea, and Perwana, the only objects on that list with proper names. But none of these planets had any direct evidence of Trojan planets, it was just shown that they would be stable. This is not true for Falinciam. Out of the 95 planets searched by the Troy Project, from what I can tell, Valencium was the strongest candidate for hosting a Trojan planet at its L5 Lagrange point, 60 degrees behind the planet on its orbit. After hearing this, I immediately started writing the script. Valencium was already interesting enough, and now it has a candidate Trojan planet, something that should be incredibly rare. And it's at a relatively close 96 light years away from Earth, making it much easier to study this place than other planets further away. I should clarify this Trojan planet is only a candidate and not confirmed to exist, but there is direct evidence that it does. It's much stronger than the other candidates found in the study due to the lack of transit timing variations, which are slight differences in the transit length and time of the planet, and observations from the Spitzer Space Telescope. Other explanations, like resonances with another planet or a more eccentric orbit, have been ruled out, leaving a Trojan planet as the strongest possibility. However, it was only officially proposed three days before I wrote this script, so there hasn't been enough time for any follow-up observations of the system. Falinciam also transits its star, that's how we discovered it, but no transits for this Trojan planet have been detected yet. 
This suggests that if this Trojan planet, which for the sake of convenience I'll be calling GJ3470C, exists, it's smaller than Earth in radius. If it was any bigger, we should have been able to detect its transit, as it would have blocked more light from Caucasian. This is important because it has an estimated mass somewhere around 2.6 times larger than Earth. So, if it does exist, it must be very dense, as it's almost three times more massive than Earth, but smaller than it in radius. Alternatively, GJ3470C might not transit the star from our perspective, and have an odd inclination that prevents it. Trojan objects don't need to be perfectly aligned with their planet, so an orbit like this is completely possible. This would make its radius much more normal, since if it doesn't pass in front of Caucasian from our perspective, we won't be able to see its transit anyway. But it also might just be another false positive to add to the pile of false positives already found around Caucasian. Maybe Felinciam really is doomed to be alone. However, if this Trojan planet is confirmed, then it would immediately skyrocket Felinciam to one of the most important exoplanets we have ever discovered, more than it already is. It's already a pretty rare type of planet, on an extremely rare polar orbit around its star. And if it has a Trojan planet, which should also be extremely rare, then Felinciam goes from just an exceptionally unusual place to a once-in-a-galaxy event. I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if of the trillion or more planets in the Milky Way, we won't ever find something like Felinciam its potential Trojan planet again. But the Troy Project did survey 94 other transiting planets for signs of Trojan planets, and Felinciam wasn't the only one. And there were two other candidates, TOI-776b and TOI-836b, two hot super-Earths both around 90 light-years away from Earth. But the paper identified both of these as weak candidates, and Felinciam as the only strong one to actually have a Trojan planet. Currently, there is strong evidence for the existence of GJ-3470c. But as I've already said, GJ-3470 is notorious for false positives. There's been several other disproven planets all given the GJ-3470c designation before. Luckily, there are plans to follow up on this discovery. The CHEOPS telescope will be looking at TOI-776b, TOI-836b, and Felinciam to search for further evidence of the Trojan planets in the near future. In the coming months, we should hopefully have much more evidence for confirming or disproving GJ-3470c. Other than that, there isn't much to say. If this Trojan planet does exist, we can't say anything about its environment yet. We know it's somewhere around three Earth masses, and could either have a normal density, assuming it doesn't transit, or a very high density, assuming it does. It will probably be hot, and have its atmosphere stripped away like Felinciam. However, because it is a Trojan planet, it will have some interesting orbital properties. It will remain at a constant distance away from Felinciam at all times, or about 60 degrees behind it. This means Felinciam will remain in a more or less constant position in the planet's sky, and be consistently visible. This isn't seen with normal planets, which constantly move around with respect to one another. This is why from Earth we sometimes can't see other planets in the solar system, as every once in a while they go behind the sun from our perspective. But in the case of GJ3470C, Felinciam will remain in a fixed position in the sky, and vice versa, Felinciam will be constantly able to see GJ3470C. Both planets are probably tidally locked to Caucasian. But we can't say anything more than guesses like this without actually confirming the existence of this object. Felinciam is a completely unique planet in the Milky Way, and we've never discovered anything like it. And if GJ3470C is confirmed to exist, it will only get more interesting. Hopefully, we can confirm the existence of Felinciam's neighboring planet soon, and begin to figure out what this place is like. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.